Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. I thought I would start today's introduction with this uh, lovely scenery of one part of Slovenia here. It's called Kobarid and behind me is uh, River Socha. So what I want to talk to you about today is related to the previous video when I talked about the speed of playing and if you remember I was playing at around 1.5 seconds. That's the ball flight time. So today I want to share with you another very important concept about uh, speed and that's about perception of speed, how we perceive speed of the ball that we hit and how we perceive the ball that's coming to us. So I'm going to use the tablet later to show you a few diagrams. So that's my introduction for now and I'll, I'll see you in the explanation. So just a quick reminder from last time, I mentioned that in my rallies and also in my, if I play points, the typical speed or time of the ball flight, so we, I can't measure speed, but I can measure ball flight time, is about 1.4 to 1.5 seconds. So, in, so this is 1.42, and if I see how fast is my buddy Urban playing, so this ball was something, you see, 1.44. So the, the balls were basically of the same speed. And I want to mention to you one uh, thing that you become aware of because in my experience when I work with adult recreational tennis players they are playing too fast for their skill level. Majority of them are playing too fast for their skill level. And I want to mention one very important reason today that you know why that happens because you might not be aware of it. There are various reasons, but today I want to mention just one reason, and that is that you perceive opponent's ball. So my buddy Urban is hitting the ball. So you will perceive this ball. You will think that this ball is faster than your ball. Okay? You will think that your opponent's ball is faster than your ball, the one that you're hitting. And because of that, you will try to match your opponent's ball or even play faster. So because you think that you play slow, you will try to play faster and therefore you will start to play too fast and too risky. So now why would you think that you play too slow? Because when you're about to make the stroke like this phase and you're preparing to make a stroke, you, you've already made a decision where you will play the ball and how you will play the ball. So in this case, I'm just playing down the middle. So in my mind's eye, there is already a trajectory this way. So I know where I want to play the ball. And this is the direction. And once I hit the ball, it is simply roughly doing what I had in mind. So there, for me, there is no rush. I am now just observing. So I'm hitting the ball here. I have a trajectory. And now the ball is going. And I am simply observing while... In this case, even I'm not playing a match, I will be recovering back to the middle slowly with no rush. I have enough time. So I'm recovering back to the middle and I'm observing the ball flight. So for me, there is no rush. And what is happening, what is happening now is something that I have already imagined. This is what's happening is what I want to happen. I've imagined it and now it's happening. So when I'm probably somewhere here, somewhere here, the trajectory of the ball flight is already being created in my mind's eye. I've imagined this ball, I'm just playing now back to my friend. And now everything that's happening now, from now on, is happening what I already imagined. So that's why I will perceive this as slow, because there's nothing new happening. It's, everything is happening what I imagined. And I don't have to move very quick. I've hit the ball and I'm recovering like very slowly, like jogging, just jumping a little bit. And now my friend is hitting the ball. And when my friend is hitting the ball, and this goes the same for the match, I don't know what is going to happen. So now I need to be very attentive and I need to start to read the ball. So I need to see, is this ball going to go this way or this way? So now when the ball starts to go, so let me put the timer. So now the difference is that I don't know what 
will happen and I have to read the ball and now I have to react. So that's why we do split step. You see the split step. So now I have to react. So you can see that by the time I land into the split step from contact, four tenths of a second have gone. So now I have about one second to execute the whole stroke because I, I need this much time to read the ball, the ball's direction. And here I'm still in the air. So I've assuming I've timed my split step correctly. I'm in the air and now I am landing and I am ready to react. So now I am starting to react. So four tenths of a second have passed. And if you remember the time of the ball flight was 144. So now I have only one second left. And now what needs to happen is relatively quick organization of my movements, including my arms and legs and so on. The body has to organize or the brain has to organize the movements in about one second and make a decision. What am I going to do now? So now it's, you can sense that there is a certain amount of rush. Okay, now something has to happen very quickly and we need to execute the stroke well. So, because I am, I've been playing tennis for a long time and I'm a tennis coach, my, my movements are well organized. So as you can see, I'm just making one step with the foot. So this foot, I'm making one single step forward, you see from, from split step. So this foot just adjusted a little, a little bit. I'm making one step. I prepared early with the ball. You see, I'm in sync with the ball and I'm executing the, the stroke on the rise. But when we look at a typical recreational tennis player, their, their movements will not be so well organized and they're going to do probably too many steps. They will have uh, complicated uh, backswings. They will start backswings late and so on. And they will be in an even more time pressure. And because they will be in time pressure, they will assume that their opponent's ball is faster than their own ball. I hope you can see where, what's the point here. You are, because you are in time pressure, you are assuming that opponent is hitting faster than you because when you hit the ball, you don't feel any time pressure. So what is the solution? The solution is to get the real facts. So you have to record yourself when you're playing with your friend. And when you think, and if you think that your friend is playing faster, your opponent is playing faster and that you play too slow, you have to measure that because as you saw just recently, how I explained that you will always perceive time pressure this way. When the ball is coming towards you, you will perceive some time pressure. And when you're hitting the ball and the ball is going away from you, what is happening is what you already predicted, what you wanted. So you don't perceive any time pressure. But when it comes to speed of the ball, you have to measure it. So again, we don't measure speed of the ball, but we can measure the, the ball flight time. So I measure it and then I see. So this one is 144. And what is the ball flight time to me is 142. So then you will see the real facts. And then you will understand that it's very likely that you're playing already fast enough and that there is no need to play faster. Because if you play faster, you will play likely to risky. So what you just need to do is if you maintain this speed and if you're playing points, well, you now you need good placement and ball control to play into certain targets with this speed and you will put your opponent under pressure. So just keep that in mind. So this is just one of the reasons why you could be playing too fast and it's very important that you're aware of it and that you can check yourself. So stay tuned. I will post up more videos. So for now, bye-bye from Field Tennis.